Hello, my name is Jussi Sjölund and I'm the producer of this film. We have had a few exciting weeks here in the Kingdom of the Grayling. Come with us on a fly fishing adventure to Tjoneok and Swedish Lapland. Sweeping over the mountains and rivers, we glide into Kaiten. The green valleys rush by beneath us. From the belly of the great silver bird, we see the waters which fire our enthusiasm. Waters enticing us with hatching mayflies, rising graylings, fantastic scenery and extraordinary fishing experiences. Like a flock of expectant ducklings, we swoop quickly down to the camp and disembark. We've landed, and at last we're in Grayling Paradise and the Grayling Fisherman's Heaven, Kaitum Dale and Tronyok. Situated some miles south of Kiruna, Tronyok lies at the heart of Swedish Lapland. The wilderness camp is situated on Lower Kaitum Lake, and the three closest rapids, Tyvek, Kukak and Churcham, are reached by boat. You can find grayling, brown trout and arctic char here, but nearly everyone has come for the excellent grayling fishing. We make our way to the nearest rapid, Tyvek, which is very good fishing water. Tyvek is a long rapid system consisting of slow moving glides and a wide tail with a clear deep channel with grayling at the edges. You normally fish at the head of the rapids, in the currents and at the outlet of the calmer water. You fish behind rocks, in front of rocks, close to land and far out. In other words, everywhere. And everywhere you'll find large grayling. We'll join France out in the stream in Tyvek. He's been fishing the same area for several days now. A clear patch next to the deep channel and he's been constantly successful. Tronyok was traditionally the spring and autumn camp of the nomadic Laplanders when the reindeer moved between grazing areas. 
Andreas Laber, who was one of the Laplanders living permanently in Chuanayok during the 1950s, founded the fishing camp. At that time, a number of families lived here and there was even a school. Laber owned a few Lap-style cabins which he rented to fishermen. You couldn't book, but there was always space for everyone. Andreas Laber was a well-known lap writer and with a total of only nine months schooling, published his first book, Anta, in 1969, recounting the tale of the Laplanders' life with their reindeer. The permanent lap residents are now long gone, and only a few derelict lap cabins bear witness that a community at one time existed here. During the 1960s, Yelivari Borough Council took over the running of the camp, and several cabins were built for rent. The harbour was built, and a fishing camp grew up. When Ingmar Christel took over the camp in 1983, he started to develop ecological fishing. An ecological awareness grew slowly but surely amongst fishermen, who now came to Chonayok for the enjoyment of fishing and not to take home as big a catch as possible. When the camp is full, up to 70 guests may be there, but it never feels crowded and only a few fish are landed for smoking. A 45-minute boat trip upstream brings us to the Chicham Rapids, which join Middle and Lower Kaitam Lake. On the way, we pass the well-known landmark of Choltapakte. The river is enclosed in a dramatic ravine of steep cliffs, making hard to find a more beautiful place for fishing. Our guide, Pale Andersson, is here to show France some interesting fishing spots. On the way back from Churchill, we stop at the outlet of Yorma Beck to try our luck with Kitem Lake brown trout. After the rains, the water in the streams is high and all the insects, which have been washed into the lake, tempt the trout to, as Pally tells us, this laden table. A few weeks ago, he caught a trout weighing over three kilos, but today they're not biting. Perhaps the water level in the beck has gone down too much. Fishing with a dry fly is a great challenge and gives fly fishing that little extra. And Chonyok can certainly provide all that is necessary when it comes to dry fly fishing. Warm sunny days encourage the insects to hatch. The summers are short in the mountains and when the warmth comes, all the insects hatch at once. The grayling can pick and choose between a feast of different mayflies. This delightful assortment of yellow and brown mayflies and caddies means that the fish are not terribly selective, they'll eat anything. In the evening, the grayling laps at gnats as a dessert, which makes it difficult for the fly fishermen as the gnats appear in swarms of millions. We climb at Ovas, the mountain nearest the camp, to get a bird's eye view of the immediate area. The Kaitam Lakes and the Kaitam River, whose source is just below our camp, dominate Kaitam Dale. Mountain and dwarf birch are most common in Chuanayok, 
but the tree line is just above, and here we find ourselves on the open fells. If you take the time to really look at the scenery, you'll enjoy the complete experience which fishing and the countryside offers. We make our way to Tybeck for some evening fishing. The fishing is so intensive that you only need a few hours in the evening to feel satisfied. When we get back to the harbour at dusk, a thin column of smoke is coming from the lakeside sauna. Warmth for our frozen bodies. We creep into the steaming sauna, where even the fishing stories are steaming ahead. When the heat has risen in your body, you might fancy a dip in the water. Only eight degrees. If the heat is too much, but the thought of an icy dip makes your courage disappear, just sit down and enjoy a cool beer and a fantastic view. It would be hard to find a more beautifully situated sauna. <coughs> what fly should you use? Each water has its favourites, and we take the opportunity to squeeze a few tips from Matthias, the guide. We might be able to try his special today. Först jag bindtråden. I fram nu så binda fram bindtråden igen och sätter dit en bit pollegarn så kommer vara vingen på klinkhammen. Gå ner till halva krokbörjan ungefär där kroppen ska börja som kommer gå fram till pollevingen. Och den här delen av flugan kommer ligga under vattnet. Så. Fäst in ett hackel. Grissla hackel kör vi ofta med på klinkhammen. Det är oftast grissla eller brunt som har fungerat riktigt bra. Det här är alltså en liten variant av Hans van Klinkens originalmodell. Två påfågel här. Så kommer det vara Flugans thorax, alltså bröstpartiet. Linda först, de två påfågelhören. Viktigt är att man aldrig fäster för många varv på varje material. Då vet jag att flugan blir ganska klumpig och tjock. Linda hacklet, parachutlindat, alltså så kallat fallskärmshacken. Man försöker lägga varje varv under andra. En fyra, fem varv. Och avsluta flugan med en whip finish knut. Klinka med orangeflugan här och eh, du ser en mycket bra i strömmande vatten, även i snabbt strömmande vatten, det är som en stor fördel med den. Den flyter högt och bakkroppen hänger ner i filmen så den imiterar otroligt mycket. Fiska torrt med den där och kommer att den alltid ska drifta fritt så gärna uppströms eller snett uppströmskast. Ibland även så tar fisken nattsländer som har varit här, en striken caddis till exempel, en, full, en färdig nattslända, en vingad insekt som flyter högt uppe på ytan. Även lite dagslända varianter som en gul forslända här med klickar såna. Det är också som sagt var inte alltid fisken vakar. 
då måste man ner lite på djupet. Då att man kör med en för tyngd fluga. Då har jag ofta sätter vi på en liten guldskalle på den. En sån där så att den kommer ner långt ner på djupet när fisken står och trycker i hålen. Mycket av det jag pratar om nu det är, det är harflugor. Även öringen går upp och tar åt. Men ska man ha en stor öring om man vill satsa på det. Då är det verkligen värt med en kaninhårstreamer. Gärna med en guldskalle och lite för tyngd med blytråd. Så man kommer ner lite. Fiskar den också i forsen bara? Nerströms? Ja, då fiskar man den som en vanlig, som en vanlig våtfluga. Nerströms eller gärna snett nedströms. Ofta när den kommer som en vändning i strömmen så kommer hugget. Kukak is our next destination. This short but powerful rapid has an excellent tail and an exciting, quietly flowing outlet to the calmer waters below. An island divides the rapids and at high water you can fish in both streams. The main stream is strong with a few small pools, giving exciting pocket fishing. A clink hammer can be used here as an all-round fly. It performs well in these strong currents and the white wing makes it easy to follow the whirling dance. Ali positions the fly with precision, and there seem to be fish everywhere. Chwana Yok. So pleasant, yet so savage. So near, yet so far. Such friendship, yet such solitude. So many sounds, yet so silent. So much liveliness, yet even the still calm. Chwaniyok. So much of everything for the restless soul. We carry on down the island in Kukak, past Grass Bay. The rushing rapids become a slow-moving stream and the grayling feed on the bounty of the river. Va? Ska du göra det? Ska du brinna också? De säger det, de som vet i alla fall. Då kunde vi ha tagit torv i istället för sur. Ja. <laughs> Even we must eat our fill. And what better than a large pan of traditional Swedish fare before we continue with our fishing? Kan du dricka? Jag får inte så nick, Mattias. Direkt ett leende. <laughs> Måste ju se glad. Sådär. Ja. Varsågod. Här, jag fick några på 12-13 kilo men jag fick inte ja. ja, det räcker ju. 
The apparently even current is composed of different smaller currents with varying speeds and directions, which makes it hard to get the fly drifting freely. And hooking the fish is not always so easy. The delight is that the river is forgiving and soon offers new chances. An El Dorado of rising fish beckons. All you have to do is tempt them to take the fly and be successful with the hooking. We must look after this fantastic fishing, so almost all fish caught are returned to the river. Kuka Falls was named after the Laplander Kukak, who met a tragic fate. During the winter, Kukak and his wife were out minding the reindeer and emptying their traps. When they skied back to the cabin, they discovered to their horror that it had burnt down, taking the lives of their three small children. Destitute, and with only the clothes they were wearing, they stood in front of the ruins, 50 to 60 kilometers from their closest neighbor and burdened with grief. Kukak and his wife make their peace with their children and start the long journey under the clear, starry sky. In the morning, Kukak was tired and sat down to rest in the shelter of a large rock on the small island which is now known as Kukoswalu. And there he died. His wife and her dog carried on their wandering and at nightfall, just when she was about to give up, she heard voices in the darkness. And in a branch-covered hole, she found a group of hunters. She recounted her tale and then passed away. The next morning, the dog howling and moaning, ran back along the track, perhaps seeking his way back to Kukak to die. Kukak's bones are still there as a constant reminder of this tragic tale. The Laplanders often use islands as temporary storage sites to bury their dead and protect them from wild animals. When winter comes, and the snow can take the weight, the coffin will be taken to the churchyard, but sometimes the island could be the last resting place of the deceased. In the calm water at the side of the island, we can hear heavy splashes, so Pally wades carefully out into the still water to make a few casts. The fish are shy, and you need really long casts to reach them.
One afternoon, we decide to go fishing for pike in the fells. This is perhaps not the first thing you associate with Trianayok, but there's a good chance of catching a pike with a fly. Several guests like to include a couple of days pike fishing, and we start by trying our luck at Lef Viken in Kaitan Lake. The air is warm and it's raining, but we're in good spirits. I discover that I'm enjoying every minute here and the weather doesn't mean a thing. It clears up towards evening when we climb the fell to La Fasaiva to try belly boat fishing. The lake is small and shallow and it's just fantastic to watch the pike striking in the half metre deep waters. While we've been going around the lake, Magnus has had a real struggle. Long rushes, jumps and a hard tussle result in this beautiful pike. Five kilos are taken in Saiva on Flugsbø. Sunset and the rain has disappeared. We have the privilege of fishing with a postcard sunset behind us. As we make our way to the lake to go back to the camp, we can only wonder at how quickly the weather changes in the fells. Every day this week has provided us with a mixture of sunshine, warmth, rain and wind. After each fishing trip in the evening and morning, we clean the fish that's to be eaten. Not everyone gets to keep some fish, but everyone wants to play their part in the telling, and the fish smoker is the natural meeting place. And grayling or trout smoked over juniper wood is certainly good to eat. That was nice here. Grosse fish, yeah. That was yeah. Guests from all over the world come to Chuanayok, where the guides take good care of them. They'll help you find the places where the most fish are biting, give you vital tips about choosing the right fly for the present river conditions. 
der braun oder vielleicht ein bisschen drin gelb. Ja. Es ist bra ist braun gelb ist gut. Ja. Danke. Ja. Okay. Okay. Petri Heil. Danke schön. Danke schön. Matthias. Water level, temperature and weather can affect the fishing and the guide can help you be a successful fisherman from the start. Early one morning, under a clear blue sunlit sky, we take the boat over the lake to climb Akavari, the holy mountain. At a thousand meters and with a steep sharply pointed peak, Akavari rises above the surrounding mountains in Kaitan Dale. The grand view is worth the effort, and at the peak you can write in the visitor's book and be remembered as one of the conquerors of Akavari. The beautiful weather goes on day after day. A clear blue sky and wonderful warmth. We carry on fishing in Kukak and spend some unforgettable evenings there. When you've waded out to your armpits, you can only confirm that that big grayling is five meters further out than you can reach with your longest cast but it regularly shows itself at the edge of the current. Perhaps I could try from the other side, but it's probably further out than it looks and just as hard to get to from there. Tomorrow I'll take a shooting head and then I'll be able to get to it, but it might not be in the same place tomorrow. Yeah, lot. The dream of a giant grayling must remain a dream, but the artificial flies have fooled a lot of very fine grayling while we've been trying to get the big one. <laughs> when you at last landed the fish, you have to ask yourself if there's anything more beautiful than to hold a large grayling bronzed by the sunset. We thank it for the fight by carefully returning it to its natural habitat. People are borrowing flies from each other and after some hesitation the cry goes up, they're biting on brown mayflies. A quick change of fly followed by another period of success. But then the party's over and they start to feed on something else. And suddenly they're biting on clinkharmon again. This might mean hatching yellow mayflies, so we try that again. Så den tuber. 
When we've waded out a long way, we see a rising fish on the inside, and the fish seems to be good. In other words, you can catch fish in any direction you like. The grayling in Chuanayok are very aggressive for their size and provide you with a merry dance. The festival of rising fish continues every evening and sometimes you can even get tired arms from playing so many fish but we're having loads of fun. Every evening ends in the same way. The heavy splashing and sucking noises are exchanged for waving tails and back fins. And now that the grayling has started to feast on gnats, the fly fishermen can't compete with the enormous quantities of the real thing. Anne Helene and Annelie, beginners, take the chance to learn more about fishing. Following a thorough theory lesson, they train the techniques of casting from the jetty. They've already started to learn a new vocabulary, and the names of flies intermingle with other fly fishing jargon, and those around them are impressed by their newly acquired knowledge. Practice makes perfect, but there's nothing like real fishing. So we make our way to the waters to see if theory works in practice. Expectations are high as we travel through still waters and rapids. First we practice short casting into the rapids, and then we move to calmer waters to cast for the basking fish. I can see yellow mayflies, cries Annalie, and starts casting intensively into the stream. Nothing can match the pleasure of catching your first fish with a fly and of returning it to freedom. Standing in the water next to your friend, each playing his own grayling, where else can you experience this? During our fishing holiday, we found that time and again two or three fishermen had fish on at the same time. This amazing fishing has left delightful memories, which can be recalled during the cold winter months. We look forward to returning next summer. Nature's artist lets his brush sweep across the heavens. First a stroke of yellow, then a stroke of red. The mosquitoes offer you the symphony of the fells. Small violins whining in time around my body. I'm both here and elsewhere at the same time. I feel liberated in body and soul. The evening draws to night, leaving me, the river and the fish. I'm at one with nature, and nature at one with me. <laughs>